All right, the part of the unfinished business is sample problem number five on page 20-9. And that problem uh, indicated we had three equations, 2a plus 3b minus c is equal to minus 10, minus a plus 4b plus 2c is equal to minus 4, and 2a minus 2b plus 5c is equal to 35. What's the solution? You have four possible answers. Well, there are two ways to approach this problem. I will illustrate both methods. The first method is in the interest of time and getting a quick answer. It may not be very sophisticated, but it's going to get you the right answer fast. The second method is more rigorous and more straightforward. And perhaps you may choose to um, use either method depending upon your own personal interest. So first of all, the quick and dirty method. We have three possible solutions, four possible solutions to this problem. Three of them are incorrect, and one of them is correct. So what I plan to do is to start off by just simply substituting into each of these equations each of these solutions and see what happens. First one, for instance, becomes 2a is minus 4, plus 3b is minus 9, minus c, minus 5. Nope, that's not it. That's not equal to minus 10. All right, let's do it again for the next one. 2a is 4. Minus 3b is minus 9. Minus c is minus 5. Is that equal to minus 10? And the answer is, yes, it is. And I'm finished. I solved the problem in less than one minute. And time is valuable. Because I was given the solution somewhere in here and just had to do some quick mental arithmetic and plug to any one of the three equations and see if it fits. So I think you have to be astute as to how you approach these problems. Now, that is one solution. Let me now show you the more sophisticated but more time-consuming way, perhaps the proper way of solving a problem. Let's take these solutions off here. We have these three equations, and we plan to use Kramer's rule. Well, Kramer's rule works as follows. If you'd like to solve for A and B and C, then what you need to do is to write the answers this way. A is equal to, first of all, a matrix or a determinant A1 divided by a determinant I'm going to call simply D. B is equal to another matrix. We can call this one A2 and divide this also by D. And C is equal to a third matrix or a third determinant and it's divided by D also. Well, D is common to all three. What is D? D is the following determinant. 2, 3, minus 1, going across here, minus 1, 4, 2, and 2 minus 2, 5. And this is D. I plan to evaluate that. Now, if you were to take the 2, 3, minus 1, minus 1, 4, 2, 2 minus 2, 5, and you reduce it, I'll save you the time with the arithmetic, you get exactly 81. So 81 is numerical value to go in these three denominators. But now, what is A1, what is A2, and what is A3? Now, sometimes the hand can be faster than the eye. Now, watch what happens. A1 is a determinant which you obtain by doing the following. Take out the three terms here involving A in front of these three equations and insert the values from the left-hand side. Minus 10, minus 4, and 35 and hence you form a new determinant that looks like this. They go to 2, minus 1, 2, put in here 10, minus 4, and 
35. Find that determinant. That's what A1 is all about. And if you go through the numerical work involved, A1 is equal to 162. So let's make a note of that up here. A1 is 162. D, we already found, was equal to 81. How about, what is A2 equal to? Uh, 